Welcome everybody to The Split, a young adult book review show for readers and writers. I'm Robert Scannon from The Dreamer Chronicles and once again I am introducing this show on behalf of Brian Cohen from the Ted Saves the World series. Brian's throat is still a little tricky, his voice is deep and sexy but he's doing some great delirious dances there. Brian, mm-hmm. how you doing? How you doing today? I'm great. I'm excited to talk about another Lauren Oliver book because she's awesome. And I uh, <clears throat> was just so happy to even, I never would have read the book Before I Fall if it weren't for this show. And now getting to read more of her work is just really cool. I'm, I'm like a fanboy or something. <laughs> Don't worry, you'll be cured. Okay, good. Which leads us right into... This week's book is Delirium by Lauren Oliver, and as Brian says, we have previously reviewed one of Lauren Oliver's magnificent books, her first book, her debut, which is called Before I Fall. If you haven't read Before I Fall, we both heartily recommend it. It's a really beautiful story, and there's really no flaws in it whatsoever. And and for a young adult writer, you've really... And a reader, sorry. You, mm-hmm. you, if you're a fan of the young adult uh, genre, then it's a perfect example. It's not a fancy book, but this one is. Um, and it's set in a dystopian world. And let's uh, start away. Shall I, shall I take away the, the description of the book? A quick summary? Go for so, it. So yes. It says on my notes here, Brian's quick summary. So uh, I'll be in person. Oops. Brian Cohen. <laughs> Delirium right. by Lauren Oliver. Lena Halloway is about to be cured as soon as she turns 18 or in 95 days. Not that anyone's counting. Cured of what? Of a disease that has been a destructive force in mankind since the dawn of time. Love. Once she's cured, she'll be free to be paired with a government-chosen lifelong partner and there'll be no chance she'll be struck down by the debilitating Amor Deliria Nervosa, as love is now called. Lena is nervous. Some of her friends caught the disease before they were cured and even her mother committed suicide after the cure quote unquote failed for the third time in a row but what lena doesn't yet know is she's about to meet alex a security guard at the curing labs and plunge headlong into a world she would rather never have discovered soon she'll be confronted with a difficult choice and will the cure be worse than the disease Kind of interesting premise, hey, Brian, that the, uh, you know, when I first first started, I thought, oh, I don't know, because I remember looking at um, Lauren Oliver's other books before I'd read Before I Fall and seeing the description of this series, because they're beautiful covers, all her covers are beautiful, and I was very drawn by it, and I started to read the description, I thought, this is stupid, and (laughs) this this is, you know, the, the old cranky old bugger in me cranky old (laughs) robert yeah the reading what do you mean cure love Mm. stupid but in actual fact even though the premise is glib Mm. oliver as usual takes us into a world where even though some reviewers dispute this not many do and it's a world that makes sense what if you know, we take it for granted, don't we? You know, we take like we take gravity for granted. We take love for granted. You know, Shakespeare, one of the great writers of our time, did so much to bring the tragedy and the the beauty of love into our literary world, and it's been a big part mm-hmm. of our culture for hundreds of years. So, when I read a description that says love is actually a problem, it's a disease, and it needs to be cured because it's the cause of all these issues, and I suddenly started to think, well. Yeah, I suppose if you took away passion and if you took away uh, drive and you took away that sort of heady chemical falling in love thing, would people act more rationally and logically? Would we not have wars? Would we not have power power plays? You know, how would it be? So, yeah, okay, well, I'll, I'll pay it and I'll, I'll pay that for a while and see where she takes us. And, and it, it took me to a good place. What did you think? Yeah, no, I totally agree. Kind of a dumb premise, but it's not about the premise. You could have the greatest premise in the world and muck it up. And this this is kind of a dumb presence that she does really well because she really takes us into the inner workings of Lena. And uh, yes. we, we get to see, we really get to experience a teenager falling in love. And in a regular book, that'd be fine. But in a world where love is forbidden, that just raises the stakes completely. 
So yeah, it took me to a good place as well. Yeah, I, I, and you actually lead me straight into it was my very first point from the reader's perspective that this is not about the setting. So even though that premise is is glib or as you say maybe a bit dumb, um, Lena is she's completely believable. She's a seventeen going on eighteen. She's looking forward to this cure. She's looking forward to the you know being free of this so called madness that that love could introduce. And she's kind of curious maybe a little uncertain about how her life will be after but she's looking forward to feeling peaceful and that's palpable you know the the, the way that oliver takes us into lena's head as you said is is excellent and, I, I, and i've even written in my notes you know at times i really felt her her own thoughts whirling and affecting her decision making and that's really clever to get into a 17 year old's head like that yeah i i agree and and i Thought a lot about Brave New World because you've got the drugs or yes. whatever the treatment is, uh, messing with the emotions, deadening things. And I, I think it's a really good, <clears throat> even though it's not specifically talking about drugs or talking about uh, <clears throat> Paxil or whatever, any any drug that's dealing with depression and, and cutting out the bigger, wider emotions as a result it, it could be seen as a commentary on it because you're trying to take out passion you're trying to take out love you're trying to avoid those kinds of things because they can lead to ill but uh in most cases they <clears throat> lead to some or it, maybe it's even just occasional cases they lead to something incredible mm. and i think that's maybe an undercurrent of what Oliver's saying here. Maybe not, who knows, but that's what I pulled from it. You definitely get the feel of that, don't you? Because there are some of those wonderful scenes where she's, without realising it, suddenly drawn to going to these illegal parties, which, you know, in, in a way mirrors current, you know, il, not so much necessarily illegal, but on the on the edge raves that a lot of teenagers like to go to. There certainly have been big here in Australia. Uh, and, and there have been problems with them too, you know, illicit drugs being sold and mm -hmm. etc. But you, when she when she attends one of those, you you feel the thrill, even though she's not supposed to feel this. Suddenly, there's this music that is not normally broadcast in their world, and you think I remember as a kid listening, not as a kid as a teenager, listening to music that I knew my parents wouldn't like, and yeah. and it doing something visceral to me. Uh, and I think Oliver captures that really, really well. I, 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 look, as you said, you know, you were looking forward to coming back to reading one of her books, and it definitely was like that for me. I think oh, I'm, you know, I was kind of rubbing my hands and going, okay, even though the premise sounds stupid, I'm really looking forward to this because I'm, I'm, yeah. sure, I'm sure <laughs> she's going to write really well, you know, and uh, and she doesn't disappoint at all. Um, no, I agree. And and even though this is kind of philosophical, the story in a way, as you said, it's really a love story. But there's some action in there too, isn't there? Some yeah. really good action. What what did you think of the action sequences? <clears throat> oh yeah, tons of fun with the action, and I think <clears throat> the end is is just really uh, wild and crazy yes. and extremely sad. And uh, spoiler, um, <laughs> but. <laughs> I I I think that she's she does Oliver does a really good job of balancing those internal scenes with the internal and external aspects of these more action packed uh these more these more action packed scenes and mm. I think was this one of those that's going to be uh, that was optioned into a movie I forget I think so yeah this could be a good one. Um, yeah, this could I, be oh, a real good one. It'll be a fantastic movie, and and not too hard, not too expensive to shoot either. Because no, it's, no, it's not at not, all. Not got wild CGI <laughs> or anything like that. So, yeah, yeah. That, let's hope so. I look, I agree with you. I think the the final climax, um, you know, even though it clearly led into a series sequel. Um, did a really neat job of resolving enough of the stuff that was going on in Delirium. Um, was wild and crazy because it just kept me turning the pages. You know, I finished the book really quickly. I, and I, how do you do that in the audio book? It just means that you, you stay up later listening to it or you do you find yourself more chores to do so you can keep listening? Ah, well, I was uh, traveling, so it just meant that instead of doing any other work on the plane, I just listen straight through oh, nice. so i was i was listening to this on the way from uh trenton new jersey to chicago and there were about four hours left when i left 
But since I'm listening to it in double time, that means by the time I got there, it was done. Wow. And you just had to explain to the, uh, to the stewards, the flight attendants, you just had to explain the tears. Yeah. yeah, yeah, it was tough. <laughs> Please bring me another napkin. I just, I don't want to explain. Uh, yeah, that's it. Oh. I always tear up on flights, especially the, the, the towards the landing oh. point. Just a quick oh, note gosh. as well. Um, there is a, there are a couple of f bomb f bombs in the book. Um, quite mm-hmm. surprisingly, actually, they're a little out of character, but the because there's only two and they're really out of character. It's it's a great. It's from the impact. The, it's brilliant. I really liked it. A couple of those. There's some discussion about sex and plenty of kissing. So once again, probably not for the younger reader, but mm-hmm. uh, not not as sensitive, I think, as uh, as uh, our last week's review of um, City of Bones. So so uh, it's not clean, but it's it's not disturbing by any means. Um, shall we move into writer's perspective? Sure, sure. Um, so while we were in the inner world of Lena and <clears throat> there's interesting stuff going on around her, I, I think some of the other characters were more interesting and, and maybe that's okay. That's mm. perfectly fine. Mm. Hannah was a trip and uh, Alex was interesting. Yes. <clears throat> and she changes over the course of this, which I think could lead her to become less of a clean slate of society and more, uh, I mean, she has obviously an interesting past with her mother and everything, but I think that beyond just the basic conflict, which you needed for this book, Mm. her basic internal conflict, do I try to love? Do I go diving into the treatment, et cetera, et cetera. Mm. I think that maybe it was necessary for her to not be so compelling herself so that you're looking at the world and you're not just caring about the character. But uh, those are my thoughts. I think maybe she could have been a little more interesting, but maybe not. I don't know. Lauren Oliver's the best, so it's tough to know. Yeah. That's, to go it, against her. You, you're right. There's, there was a certain sense in there that you weren't – I suppose that's probably true to the character, isn't it? She wasn't quite sure of her goals. And yeah. uh, and so she got a little swept up by circumstance and – at times there made decisions that I wouldn't have made. But that's the whole point, isn't it, of I suppose of being seventeen, is that you, you kinda of go, Oh, I shouldn't do this, but it just looks really cool. Uh, yeah. And uh, and I think she does a great job, as you say, of of getting into Lena's head about that. And look that, that and that kind of gets done. She's there's no going back after the first book. So no. in, in a in a way, the first book is the is like the first plot point of a normal book where you know, you get to that first twenty five percent. All of a sudden, something happens, and there's just no way the character can go ever go back to their main world again. And and that's for sure. At the end of this one, really led me into mm-hmm. wanting to to start reading the second one again. Which presumably her goal there is going to be to uh, find somebody. Will uh, I won't give it away. Um, <laughs> but I, I also I thought once again I think you know, kind of said it in the reader section. Lord Oliver has a really great sense of the young adult setting. You know, she understands the desires, the fears, relationships. You know, there's nothing really syrupy. Um, there's nothing sort of, even though there are tropes, it's not stere- stereotypically teen. You know, you don't get those sort of sequences where Alex is gently stroking her hair and she feels the shivers and, you know, you don't get any of that. Mm. It's the, the love is, is evolved really nicely. Um, so yeah, even though I think the tropes were, were clear, um, and maybe even verging on cliched, you know, you've got the regulators and then you've got the really violent police, um, Mm -hmm. the, the setting also, there's a real palpable sense of the fear about the curfews, um, and the fact that there is going to be pretty severe violence if you don't follow, follow the, the dystopian orders. Um, and we had, you know, the, the, the home is being checked and the, the uh, identity is being checked to see if there's anyone there who is uh, invalid, which I thought was quite clever. So, uh, yeah, the, I thought the, the oppression was well done a little bit like, as you say, brave new world or even the giver, you know, to some degree as well. Yeah. Yeah, for sure. Um, one of my takeaways is I think the world, I mean, it was very deep and realized. It really reminded me a lot of Matched. It's very similar to Match. Yes. In a lot of ways, yes. in the construction of the world, in the uh, kind of ho-hum main character. Um, 
And and so I think those make a good pairing, actually, because yes. they are very different in some ways. But I think if you're <clears throat> looking to do something about love and dystopia slash utopia, read those two books and you'll really get a, an interesting palette uh, <clears throat> of different different ways you can go about it. Mm, oh, well said, definitely. I, you know, one of my takeaways would be that – here is a premise based on stripping away one of our most strong emotional responses to anything, and that's kind of clever. You think, oh yeah, I wonder what would happen there. In, in and as you say, in a way that's like matched, where decisions are stripped away because they're all uh, algorithm predicted, and mm-hmm. and and in the giver, where you know it's kind of forbidden to be to. Uh, how do you put that? Loud, loud, enthusiastic <laughs> about anything. So, so you know, there's sort of a these themes have been done before, but they're they're all worth reading for those many different reasons. And and I yeah. think look, one of my yeah. takeaways is that this is actually a great series opener, um, and it's really different enough from from her debut before I fall for for any reader to enjoy just for the writing style alone. I think. I agree, totally. I think go check it out. <clears throat> We're we're fans. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I'm a fanboy too, Brian. That's right. How's your voice going? Do you reckon you'll last through a prompt of the week? I think I can last through a prompt. Okay, take it away. Uh, although we didn't do our takeaways. Oh, okay, okay, all right. That's. Uh, I thought you'd started with a takeaway, and so I went with a second takeaway. <laughs> oh no, that's fine. <laughs> well then, no, then no, give no. me a takeaway. Give me another one. Go on, go for it. No, um, I think. Lauren Oliver's skill here, it just goes to show how important it is to improve your craft as you go along. So keep working on getting better and you will make some big headway. I think that you and I personally, uh, we just been writing a lot, trying to get those first million words out and and improve. And then from there, I think you can find your weaknesses and really target them. And that's something I'm going to be working on in the next few months. So I think that you should really continue to find ways to work on your skills and it'll show in your writing. Well said. And, and, you know, and try taking something that's really, really simple. I think, you know, one of my takeaways was, and I mentioned at the start, you know, could love really be one of our most destructive forces? Um, You know, perhaps if there were no passion, we wouldn't have war. But what would we have? And yeah. and so I think this is cl- what what Oliver does that's clever. She just doesn't she doesn't just say, okay, we're going to take away love, and uh, you know this is the world we're in. But she also then does the the really great sci fi thing, which is the okay, that's the cause. So what's the effect? And I think she gives us a real glimpse of what what the world might be like if we were forbidden to fall in love, and it's not pretty. Yeah. So yeah, agreed. Agreed. So, so now we, I'm ready for my prompt. We've over delivered on the takeaways. We're ready for the prompt of the week, Brian. Take yes. it away. Delirium depicts a world without love. What other emotions might a utopian society try to take from us and why? Would you like living in a world without fear, hope, pain, or something else? That's it. Or even a world without Brian. Uh, <laughs> I mean, honestly. Just, you that couldn't, sounds terrible. That story couldn't be written. No. Oh. <laughs> tears, more tears. Oh, stewardess, <laughs> can you please bring over some more tissues? Oh. Well, while Brian's drowning in a pool of tears oh, over there, respond pockets. to the prompt of the week in the comments section of the show notes at thesplitbookreviews.com. We'd also love it if you subscribe to us on iTunes and leave us a review on iTunes. It's the lifeblood. Look, he's wringing out his towel of tears there. This is a great radio show here. I'll just... <laughs> <laughs> Let's put a few sound effects in there. Um, and, of course, if you'd like to subscribe to us on YouTube, we did have a lovely comment that said our radio voices were really nice. They obviously haven't taken the opportunity to look at us on YouTube because you'll see our faces are definitely made for radio. Uh, oh. I, I speak for myself. Brian's very pretty, actually. Uh, he's, a, he's a handsome dude. Oh, stop. <laughs> and, uh, Brian, next week we are reviewing another independent author's book. Mr. Yes. Hugh, Hugh Howie, somebody you know personally, I believe. Yeah, I mean, I 
interviewed him once. But yes, <laughs> uh, we're reading the first book in his Molly Fide series. I don't have the title in front of me, but um, I'm very excited to check that out because I've actually never read any of Hughes' stuff. So oh, this wow. is going to be... I haven't read Sand, I haven't read Wool. This is going to be new for me, so I'm really, I'm really looking forward to it. Well, there you go, people. I've already started reading the first few <laughs> chapters of Modified. It's good. If you haven't read it, you should definitely be getting onto it now. And we will see you and talk to you next week. Thank you, Brian. Brian Cohen from Ted Saves the World series. I'm Robert Scanlon from The Dreamer Chronicles. And this is The Split. <laughs> Thank you guys for watching. Somewhere on this page is a subscribe button to the Split channel. We do reviews every week. We would love it if you followed us every single week. Isn't that right, Robert? That's exactly right. Follow us now. Hit the subscribe button. Do it.